Richmond this afternoon. Jerry fulfilling the ambition of a lifetime. He refereed the semi-final last year also between these two counties. And he's hoping for another epic final, I know, with the minimum of fuss and trouble. That's Hill 16. Packed to capacity and... Goodness, I wouldn't like to be trying to leave there in a hurry. Although the exits, of course, are excellent. August and Ish. Shasson on Slo and Chabar can croak it out on the via. Coleman. 
goal by taking a bit of authority in the middle, and that's Ian O'Ryan who puts it over the bar. Ian O'Ryan, the scorer of the opening point, as Galway take command early on. Kiddie's free, moving away to the right of the goal, and well off target. So, Galway still the leaders then, by that point from Ian O'Ryan. It's a good knock against the breeze by Ken Hogan. Off Ken Hogan, Ian O'Ryan going in. Oh, Tipperary living so dangerously at the moment. Tony Keeney, marvellous catch. Here's Joe Cooney, couldn't quite control it. John Kennedy, Aidan O'Ryan up the field, but there's nobody up there. Silver is uh, not going out for Aidan O'Ryan at the moment. I think his hands go with Nicky English. Connor Hayes looking for the ball to come out to him. And the linesman signal that's going to be a Galway ball. Disputed by Nicky English. Certainly the Galway tactic at the moment is to play the ball, use the breeze, put it down into the full forward line, unsettle that tip full back line if at all possible. Sylvie slowing down the game. Not following Aiden Ryan at the moment, incidentally. Aiden's playing out around the half forward line. Tony O'Connor. Tony was fouled by Tony Keady. That's going to be a free hit for Tipperary. And Nick English is their free taker. Tony Keady, who, like Peter Finnerty, has been a Galway regular now since the All Ireland semi final in 1985. Nicky English, the catalyst about whom this entire Tipperary team seems to tick. Should be the equaliser. It is. So sides level after six minutes play. Commons. That's taken by Conor O'Donovan. Happily, I'm sure for him, he feels back at fullback this afternoon. Jerry McInerney eager for the fray, nipping in smartly, but he overcarried. He was trying to release it outside to Michael Coleman and the referee there signalling, but he overtravelled. Jerry, who has spent uh, much of the last two years in the US, incidentally. Jerry today is playing in his eighth championship match, and remarkably, three of those have been All Ireland finals. This is where the ball may well end in there between the big two. John Kennedy coming from left half back to take the free. Low against the breeze. And Fox getting there ahead of Holly Kilkenny. Awkward enough position. John Lahey trying to keep it in play, and the umpire steps in quickly and signals that it's gone off John Lahey, and that will be a puck out. John Cummins, who produced a couple of truly outstanding saves in last year's final, ready for the puck out. 
point apiece in case you've joined us late in the 1988 All-Ireland Hurling Final. stand for Jerry McInerney, plenty of advice as well as to where he should place this ball it comes off Declan Ryan he's got a lot of composure for a player who's so young just 20 years of age, 20 in July Declan Ryan left-handed then, searching the inside, Commons calls misses, takes it again the second time however No Sheehy under it, can't hold it comes out towards Paul Delaney Here's Bobby Ryan hoping to impress in this match as he's impressed all year in the championship. And Declan Ryan is held by Jerry McInerney. Declan Ryan here who's completing his first full year in the senior team. And certainly his composure on the ball as we saw a little early on there certainly belies his youth. Paul Delaney range free taker teasingly in towards Vicky English breaks down from Toby Keeley's stick out towards Donny O'Connell couldn't get it up on his stick comes out to Pat Fox and that's Peter Finnerty breaking it up takes a heavy tumble however and fouled by the redhead there Declan Ryan he's a really great wing back Peter Finnerty and I know our viewers in the US this afternoon and particularly in New York will be following his progress with great interest Breeze carrying the ball way downfield. It certainly is a factor in the first half, and it's aiding Galway. Galway, the champions, bidding to hold on to their title. Michael Coleman releasing it outside to Joe Cooney, who put it back in quickly to Martin Nocton. And that's over the bar. This man is deadly in front of goal. The hero of the last day against Offaly starts in very positive form in the final. So Galway's lead is restored. Between Keady and O'Connell it comes, drops down towards Aiden Ryan, can't hold it. But Malone, such a hero last year, but he threw that ball, the referee decides. Correct decision, I think. Galway fans don't agree with the referee's verdict, but it seemed that way to me, I must say. is a, a better position for Paul Delaney it's a 65 effectively in low again towards Pat Fox Ollie Kilkenny trying to get the measure of Fox now breaks out Jerry McInerney closing down Pat Fox's space that's Ollie Kilkenny high a great deal of length out of two brilliantly there however by Pat Malone and a sideline ball for Tipperary that's uh, Ollie Kilkenny who did well, stayed out of that effectively, received the loose ball and played it well downfield. Bobby Ryan then coming up to take the sideline ball, his side trailing by a point but playing into the breeze. Across it comes towards Joe Hayes who hasn't seen much of the action so far. John Lahey closed out quickly by Peter Finnerty. It doesn't look like he's going to get too much change out of Finnerty. It's Pat Malone. Out it comes to Martin Nocton, a match winner, surely. Low ball to Ian Ryan, the architect of many fine scores at the semi-final. Well released outside to Martin Nocton, who kept on motoring before Bobby Ryan could get back to put in a challenge. He stuck it over the bar, and Galway have a two-point lead, and he scored two of the three points. His points coming from play in exciting fashion. And certainly this is the Galway attack that we saw in the semi-final. When they get the ball, when they get into open positions, they are so effective. Tipperary will have to counter in midfield because it's Galway in the ascendancy at the moment. Pat Malone too high with the delivery. was a really good position and there were players in near the square waiting for that ball Colin Bonner stamping his 
authority in midfield at the moment. That's Declan Ryan up towards Pat Fox. Good pick up. A tricky forward. Peter Affinity can't hold a stinging pass. Sylvie Lenin releases to midfield. Picked up by Joe Hayes. A nice sidestep by Hayes. Settles himself. Nice composure. But a good save at the end by John Commons. Saw it all the way. To midfield towards Pat Malone. Left-handed and left-sided. Downfield towards Ian O'Ryan. Sun into his eyes. That's Michael McGrath, marking is a little slack at times, down there for Tipperary. Ian O'Ryan gets it onto his left-hand side, but he can't steer it on target. It remains Galway, three points, Tipperary, one, and there are nearly 14 minutes gone in the first half. Ken Hogan with another mighty puck out against the breeze. Sheehy, taken however and well read by Jerry McInerney, lofts it high into the sky, it'll drop down there invitingly for Ian O'Ryan and tapped away well by uh, John Heffernan indeed and it's gone for the game's first 65. The linesman had a look across at one another and the linesman on the right in fact was the one who saw Heffernan take it away from the grasp of Ian O'Ryan. Heffernan, a very tight-marking player. He's uh, wearing number four. Uh, wearing uh, number four, yes. And that's gone well over the bar. Tony Keeley then with the 65, getting his first point of the match, and Galway's fourth. chasing with Pat Malone this man on this side John Denton says that's a Galway ball John quite insistent so here's the view as Jerry McInerney sees it Ooh. Goes towards Michael McGrath off McGrath's stick. He appeals. And it might have been another 65, but the referee is not impressed. McGrath played well for quite a while as a wing forward last year. He opened up the right hand side of that tip defense indeed. on to a Ryan shot half block down a player down injured John Lahey and it's going to be a free in for Tipperary received a loose stroke of the hurley that time I think into the tummy take it up on the feet and away he'll go and the referee is insistent that uh, Mentors and trainers are removed from the field as quickly as possible, and so this gentleman is not allowed on. Nicky English ready to take the free. The side needing a point, and he supplies it. Both Tipperary's points have come from frees, and they both come from the stick of English. Michael McGrath travels down towards Linsky, trying to go around the defender. McGrath, Bobby Ryan. Fiercely competitive stuff. Ian O'Ryan. Game of real intensity, but uh, it hasn't opened up as much as most neutrals would like it to so far. And the referee says that's a free against Galway. A foul by Brendan Linsky, barging into an opponent. That will take some of the pressure off the tip defence. Tip two points adrift at the moment, four points to two, Galway the leaders.
Jokuni has now moved back out to the 40, his chosen position, and as you saw there, Linsky in on the fringe of the square. Goes out to Mickey English from that loose ball. And pass forward to Donny O'Connell. Nice turn, getting inside. Oh, a point. It's four points to three. Tips first point from play. Comes from Donny O'Connell, the kid of all man. Much criticised from time to time by sections of the fans for his contribution, but he's a very effective centre forward. So just a point between the teams. Let's hope the nervous phase of the game is behind us and the match will now open out a bit. As Pat Malone replies quickly for Galway, it travels over the bar for Malone's first score and Galway have once again a two-point advantage. trying to hold with Jerry McEnany breathing down his neck, Bobby Ryan nips in and that goes off his, the legs I think of Ollie Kilkenny and a temporary sideline ball Bobby Ryan would love to point from this distance one of the great wing backs in modern hurling a former all-star, the referee having a little word with uh, Pat Malone and Declan Ryan jostling for positions well chipped in towards Mickey English but travels away from the face of the goal and wide English very much the man that Tip will look to this afternoon the 25 year old captain will be 26 next month so 20 minutes gone in the first half Joe Hayes, one-handed away to his left, towards John Lahey. Space closed down quickly by Peter Finity, but this is an effective search forward by Lahey. Two players marking him. He tried to release it to Joe Hayes, from whence the pass came in the first place. Hayes, upfield. Aiden Ryan adds to it, with Grant's hurling towards Nicky English. Turning, weaving, back to Aiden Ryan. Over the bar it sails. No, it's not. It's not. It's seen from here that it had gone over. It's gone wide. The temporary fans were cheering. So it remains. Galway, five points. Tip, three. Aiden Ryan has now gone back into a top of the right position. A top of the left, rather. Brendan Linsky, a thorn in the side of Conrad Donovan at the moment. Back down. Colin Bonner is in there, so too John Kennedy. Kennedy with beautiful skill. Oh, this man might be back for a more a football final sometime. A very resourceful clearance then by John Kennedy for a Galway sideline ball. Michael Coleman, no. Pick up his meat from Joe Cooney to Pat Malone, and he drills it over the bar. In characteristic fashion, Holway have opened up a three-point lead. Malone's second point. Certainly the tip midfielders are going to have to close him down when he moves forward into those particular attacking positions, because he's deadly. by John Heffernan towards Colin Bonner who wasn't expecting it Tony Keady was the centre half back full under pressure long ball down to in for in around to run into a good shoulder by Paul Delaney a very effective shoulder by Delaney at the crucial and critical moment good clearance to midfield towards Declan Ryan scramble forward again for Galway and to Joe Cooney Delightful player Joe Cody when he really gets motoring. This is Jerry McInerney looking busy as always. And last year's man of the match has given Galway a four-point lead. That's the 
the kind of point that can certainly inspire a team. Norway playing with the advantage of the breeze, we'll remind you. Just over 12 minutes to go now to half-time. Tip will be hoping to stay as near as possible to Galway before half-time and have that breeze at their backs for the second 35 minutes. Galway looking sharp, the experienced All-Ireland final team. And that's a tip ball. trying to break it down for Cooney but no she he was in there quickly whipped it to midfield towards John Lahey treaded it back as far as Joe Hayes nice control good composure by Hayes Lahey forward into space nobody there expecting it it's Jerry McInerney who leads it well however he picks it up but goes to the ground and wins himself for free it's not easy for players like young Declan Ryan spoken to there by Jerry Kerwin to make an impression against one of the great half back lines in modern hurling it's interesting indeed that taking a look at the half back line and midfield of Galway, between them they've contributed four points so far. One of those was from a 65 by Keating. McGrath tried to keep it in play, but even he can't do that. Well, the Tipperary followers, tense, expectant, hoping, of course, as well that this will be their day. his way he certainly is impressive chopped down on that occasion and winning himself the free Connor Hayes has come out from his full back line there's nobody marking Nicky English if this ball travels back quickly Connor fancies his chances from his own 65 metre line oh that's well on its way it sails high it's got over the bar for Galway's eighth point they can all do it, the full forward line, the half forwards, midfield, half back and the full back line. He was very heavily criticised, of course, for his performance in the last match, indeed in this year's campaign, so Conor Hayes has a point to prove. And the Galway crowd now surging behind their team, singing their praises and realising that with that win behind them, to try and kill off this Tipperary challenge and realising that there might well be a two in a row that was a high challenge and in the face there of Jerry McInerney who getting a little bit out of control and the referee moving in there and having a word with Colin Bonner quite clearly it's going to be a free to Galway I don't think there was a name taken just a warning issue Joe Cooney is the free taker off target that's Galway's fifth wide Tipperary themselves having just four Tony Keeney was in there smartly but left the ball behind to Declan Lyon up towards Pat Fox being held there by Oli Kilkenny whistles and signals and it's going to be a free enter to Barreri as they play away but uh, the referee's whistle did sound there's so much noise in Croke Park it can be very hard to hear the official from time to time five points the margin at the moment and Nicky English will want to drill this one over the bar he's got two points already oh it came off the post and comes down and it's gone wide Fox claims he was being held, as he seemed to be, when that ball came down off the post. Fox goes in there to protest, to draw the foul, or the alleged foul, to the attention of the umpire, but nothing comes of it. It's eight points to three. Pat Malone running unchallenged, striking, 
and that one tails to the left. He'd have to be content with the two points he's scored so far. Galway winning a lot of possession from their strong half-back line and their powerful midfield. The affinity. Affinity once again. Getting it through just far enough as far as Pat Malone. He was fouled. Didn't try to unhinge him. Fouling him in any case with six and a half minutes to go to the half-time whistle. And for disputing that, Tip penalised 10 metres. So a more favourable position then for Tony Keady. It's a flawless finish. He's got two long-range frees and two points. He is delighted. Nine to three. Pat Malone has now been marked by Aidan Ryan trying to close down his dominance at midfield. And there are several switches at the moment, I notice, in the Tipperary team not playing as well as they can at all. But that really is a tribute to the effectiveness of Galway so far. Donny O'Connell trying to burst forward. Free in. John Lahey seems to have moved in towards midfield. And Colin Bonner out towards the left half forward position. In fact, he's now gone forward again, I see, into the full forward line. Where he's been marked by Sylvie Lenain. Nicky English is free. This time the post doesn't come against him. He strokes over his third point from a free, keeping Tipperary in touch. Well, five points in a hurling game, it's not such a big lead, of course. But Galway certainly have been the team of the first half. Bill Sheehy and passes it forward towards Aidan Ryan. John Lahey. Out of minor up to Pat Fox, good catch going on his own. By the wind takes it, the sting out of it, and it doesn't even go over the end line. It's John Commons who clears downfield towards Ian Ryan. Joe Hayes appeals over there from uh, Pat Fox. It's going to be a tip ball in any case. Tipperary certainly restructuring their team, as we say. Aidan Ryan now in midfield, marking Pat Malone. Colin Bonner, who hasn't had a good game so far, he's up top of the left. John Lahey has moved across, and he's also in a midfield position. John Kennedy, not hitting it too well. Peter Finity. Michael Coleman. The face of the goal, dangerously so, with Pat Fox around, trying to turn inside Ali Kilkenny. Certainly the supply of the ball up towards Nicky English and Pat Fox. Not all that great so far, but it produces a point on this occasion from Declan Ryan. Declan Ryan's first point of the match, and now there's just four between them. So despite the fact that they haven't been playing all that terribly well, Tip very much in touch in this final of 1988. No Sheehy did well, but that's going to be a Galway ball. Tip will be hoping to hold their composure as much as possible to the half-time whistle. Galway then hoping to impose their will a little bit more. Canary towards Brendan Linsky. And it's over the bar. They've been so dominant in a way, it's surprising that they're only five points ahead at the moment. I would have thought that they should have maybe been a little bit further, further ahead. Breaks it down, him off Aiden Ryan up to Nicky English. Looked at the post and he pushes it over the bar. 
his fourth point, the first to come from play, and their inspirational leader. Sheehy going out of that one but leaving it behind it breaks out towards Pat Below who wasn't expecting it to come Declan Ryan waited belted it forward to Colin Bonner who will be hoping to make an impression at the top of the left on Sylvie Lenane towards Pat Fox the other corner forward at the moment Ali Kilkenny staying close, staying tight but conceding the free So Nicky English will once again come across and Galway now in defence are committing the type of errors like that foul there by Kilkenny on Fox that will bring Tipperary even closer. Taking great care. Oh, it was wide of the target, away to the left-hand side. And so it remains ten points to six. A minute to go before half time. John Kennedy taking that well. With great poise. Half block down, however. Oh, there was a shoulder there just off the ball, which I saw. It seemed to be by Michael Coleman on John Kennedy. Kennedy is down injured, and the referee is coming across having a word with Michael Coleman. That was an off-the-ball incident. It was a shoulder, which has uh, put John Kennedy out of the game just for the moment. He's in need of attention, attention which is getting over on the far sideline. John Kennedy happily back in the match. Nicky English has now drifted out into the half-forward line. Donny O'Connell has gone full forward late in this first half. Michael McGrath. It's blocked down well, however, by John Heffernan. Out by John Kennedy. Jerry McInerney nipping in. The meat in the sandwich on this occasion. He waited, expecting a free. Nothing came on, but out to Michael Coleman it comes. A timely shoulder takes him off his stride, he carries the ball out over the sideline and Theo English there in the background was giving great encouragement to the young Tipperary stars Declan Ryan one of the stars of course that so much is expected from John Kennedy, one of the Dublin based players who make the long journey down to Thurlis a couple of times a week and indeed when it's the build up to the championship you're travelling down practically the whole time the referee calls for the ball at the end of a first half in which Galway, the champions, were very much the dominant force. But they go in, leading by only four points. They had the breeze at their back, but at half-time, the score is Galway, ten points, Tipperary, six. And we look forward to the action of the second half very shortly. <laughs>